locals react to Thomas Bell's self-immolation, and we interview independent journalist Jason Talley. Hello, and thank you for watching Free Keen TV. I'm your anchor, Michelle Seven. In local news, this past Tuesday, the Keene police had an open house. Jason Repture was there and filed this report. Tasers, toddlers, and tactical weapons. The 28th annual National Night Out saw the Keene Police Department open up their doors and mingle with the public. The Keene Fire Department was also on hand, turning a fire response vehicle into a treehouse of sorts for the kids. Other entertainments for the kids consisted of a couple inflatable houses to bounce around in. Food and drink were given away as locals gathered with members of law enforcement. Corrections officers from the Cheshire Department of Corrections were on hand to demonstrate the taser and answer questions for the public. Questions like, why have an open house in the first place? We came out today because I think a lot of people misunderstand us. You know, I think a lot of people think that we are uneducated, that we are uncompassionate, that we don't care about people, that we're aggressive and violent, and maybe that we're just, you know, jerks. And that's not who we are. We're not jerks. Keen police declined to be interviewed on camera. The American Red Cross was in attendance, and on display were various city vehicles. As much a show of force as a friendly face, the National Night Out gave the public a chance to interact with law enforcement under more friendly circumstances. Thomas Ball self-emulated in front of Superior Court in protest of the state's violation of his liberties. He was sent, uh, sentenced to anger management and denied visitation of his two, chil two of his three children, even though he had uh, been given a non-guilty verdict. He issued a letter which was printed in the Sentinel, detailing his frustrations and complaints. I spoke with some keen residents to learn their thoughts. Would you mind telling me your name and where you're from? Uh, my name is Matt, and I'm from here in Keene. Right on. Well, tomorrow marks the one-month anniversary of Thomas Ball's death. Are you familiar with who he is? Yeah, he was the guy that uh, just couldn't deal with things any longer and lit himself on fire in front of the courthouse. And what are those things that you, you, know, you referenced that he couldn't deal with any longer? What the uh, courts had been doing to him in uh, connection with his children and his ex-wife. How do you think we can protect ourselves from an ever-encroaching government if we let them in the door at all? We have to just, people have to just step back and say, enough is enough. We're not going to let you do this to us anymore. And that's in all walks of life. You know, uh, the state would control your life from birth to death, and it's coming to that and we're letting it happen. And there's no one to really blame but ourselves for letting them overstep the bounds the way they have. So what are you personally doing to combat that? Right now, there's not a lot I can do except vote. Well, there, you know, there are some suggestions that you can not pay taxes and thereby not be paying the, uh, the poor and mismanaged, you know, entity of the state. That's one option. What do you think of that? Well, people that don't pay taxes get per, uh, prosecuted by the state and they end up going to jail for it or they get fined for it and they still have to pay the taxes that they're being punished for not paying in the first place. You know, that's, that's a no-win situation. So the state acts as your accuser, your babysitter, your judge, your jailer, and everything? Pretty much. Can you think of anything that the state does and does well? How do you think that Mr. Ball feels about the fact that very few people are talking about, much less doing anything about the fact that, um, that the state's intervening in families? I mean, the guy lit himself on fire to make a point, and it doesn't even seem to really have been noticed. Well, it was noticed for a week or two because it gave everybody something to talk about. Now people have kind of, it's in the background. Now there's something new to talk about. Uh, a lot of that, I think, has to do with uh, sensationalism on the part of the media. Uh, 
we're trying to do something about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for the interview. I appreciate you stopping by and talking to me. You have a nice day. You too. All right, thank you. Yep. Can you tell me your name and where you're from? Hi, I'm Palin Bergeron. I'm from Key, New Hampshire, born and raised here. So. Right on. Well, um, as, uh, as we were discussing, Thomas Ball, a month ago tomorrow, lit himself on fire out in front of the Superior Court. Was that a topic of conversation amongst your family and friends? Uh, yeah, it was. I did hear a little bit about it. Not too much, though, because I just, like, I heard it that day when he did it, and nobody really knew anything about it, so... Well, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but tomorrow marks the one-month anniversary of the death of Thomas Ball. Are you sh are familiar with who he is? Uh, I don't know him. Uh, I don't recognize the name, but I'm very familiar with the story and what happened, yeah. Okay, so are you a father yourself? Yes, two boys. All right, so, so I'm sure that you took some interest in the fact that his case had to do with parental rights and uh, custody and visitation, etc.? Yes, yeah, I'm aware of, of I read the, some of the excerpts from the letter that he uh, was posted in the Sentinel, and uh, it talked about his troubles with um, his parenting thing and his divorce and things like that. He did not have, um, he had no unsupervised visitation of his children for over 10 years. That's, that's too bad. It's frightening how a vindic vindictive parent, whether male or female, can actually start that process moving, and once, it, once it's opened up, it's pretty scary. So do you think things that there are things that are a widespread problem? For example, I don't know, uh, marijuana laws? Well, that opens up the whole euthanasia thing, too. Like, if you want to, you know, let yourself go and not be plugged in, you should be allowed to. If you want to smoke marijuana in your room, you should be allowed to. So can I distill down from what you've said that basically you think that you ought to be able to do whatever you want to your own body, just not to other people's? Absolutely. So, yes, I mean, I think that pretty much everyone agrees that you ought to be able to do what you want with your own body. And in the case of Thomas Ball, he did do what he wanted. He committed suicide. He doused himself, lit himself on fire out in front of Superior Court here in Keene, New Hampshire, and he's dead. Tonight for our pa open panel, we have Heike Corser, joined by Jason Repscher, and special guest, Adamo Freeman. Jason, before we get into the video discussion, could you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Um, I am Jason Rapture. I am actually, I moved to Keene um, approximately five months ago um, from the Reno, Nevada area. And I moved to Keene for the Free State Project. Um, mostly it's just nice to be surrounded by other like-minded, liberty-oriented people such as Heike and Adamo and Michelle and so on. Um, I'm a big fan of the state motto. I think just in general, just to live free or die. I think if, um, in a sense, if you know, if you don't have freedom, and you know, it's something I'm willing to die over, something I'm willing to commit my life to to spread these, uh, spread the ideas of liberty. So, and if you don't have liberty, I really think there's really no point to life. So, and um, with that, thank you for the follow up on Thomas Ball. And either of you guys, um, did you guys, either one of you know Thomas Ball or? personally? Or? I did not, and uh, that's surprising. I'm a little social butterfly around town, and I know most people, but I don't recall ever meeting him. Yeah, I never, I, I never met Thomas Ball either, but uh, I could definitely relate to what he was probably experiencing. I mean, I don't know if any of y'all have had uh, experiences with the state, but they are uh, quite good at putting the squeeze on an individual, you know. I mean, I'd like to hear more about what, you know, these uh, city officials or people w within the uh, courtroom building you know, feel about it and what they're going to do to make sure this doesn't happen again, you know? I mean, what do you guys think could happen, you know, to better, to prevent a situation like this again? Oh, gosh. You know, I, I and follow up on the whole court system, I mean, it, it, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's enough to drive somebody insane. I mean, literally, I mean, this person was willing to light himself in fire over it. It's something he dealt with for 10 years. And just being around the court system that just I've seen, just since I've been in Keene, uh, it's, a, it's a nightmare. It's a charade. I mean, it's really, I mean, you're pretty subjected to their rules, and it's pretty much it's stacked against you. It's, and it, it really isn't justice at all. And I think, you know, Thomas Ball took it to that extreme. So, I mean, it was pretty, you know, had to be pretty the severe. The systems are a nightmare. I mean, th I think the biggest thing is they, they don't actually know the person that's in that courtroom. They're just saying, okay, these are our rules, and here's what we're going to say, and now you have to do what we say. You know? Sure get into each individual case, which well, right. I think would be. I would agree. I think that's one of the big problems is that is that the uh, 
people who work in these buildings are probably numbed by the effect that their job has on individuals. And mm -hmm. like I said, I've been involved in court cases. I just went through a year case in Massachusetts. Right. And it is not only you know time, money, but uh, physically stressful and draining on yourself. Sure. You know, and I, I just, you know, what, what are some things that we, we could as a community advocate to prevent this? You know, what, what are some steps we could take? What do you think, Heike? Um, I don't know. It depends on the situation. In something that well, Thomas Powell How about, how about family through, court? You know, how, family court, I mean, they need to do more research into why they're having issues to begin with. You know, before they actually take it to court and everything, I think. Right. Maybe I mean, the they individuals. need to, like, like the social workers, you know, um, legally they have to go visit their clients once a month. It should be more often than that. Social workers should have smaller caseloads so they can be more active and more involved in how, like, the family dynamics and what goes on and how, how everything's going. So you want more preventive stuff prior More, to court yes, than absolutely. actually draining out years worth of court. Absolutely. What do you think, Jason? You know, uh, I've always kind of taken an extreme stance on this, I think, in a situation where, um, you know, kids are involved and things like that. I think the incentive is the, the custody, I think, is, um, you know, I don't think necessarily one party or the other should have to pay a big, large sum of, you know, money monthly. I think the that fact that you have custody of that kid, you should be able to provide for that. And I think voluntarily, whether the dad or the mother should be willing to assist with that. But the large amounts of money that they require people to, to pay for child support, I mean, it, it just, it really doesn't make any sense. Right. And how they put people's back to the law like that, and they, they'll take like a fifth of someone's income. And, um, you know, and it's very t difficult, obviously, to sustain themselves. You see people getting locked up in, you know, jail that actually make a decent amount of money, and it's just they can't fund child right. support. And it's or even exactly the people that don't make, uh, sorry, oh. a, bunch, uh, a lot of people that don't make a lot of money, that number is actually based on before taxes, and then you have this sum of money, and then you're left with just this. And, I mean, I know someone who has two children, so he's paying child support on two, and he can barely afford his own apartment because of this. Right. I mean, I would have to agree that pretty much we would like to see, you know, I think the state should be out of families as wise as possible. I think too many people are quick to go to the courts and say, get me what I want, and all too often nobody ends up really winning. So it's really a, a message to folks out there like to try to handle uh, you know, your business yourself before even getting to court is what I feel. But uh, on top of that, you know, we don't also look at the victims outside of the, the Ball family and that are closely related. I mean, thousands of dollars through 10 years, it had to cost taxpayers hundreds of thousands sure. of dollars probably. And, you know, what about those? You know, what about the people being harmed you know, by, by money being right. taken from them to Absolutely. pay for this expense, you know, because I'm sure it isn't fully funded by that. What, what, what can we tell some folks out there? To, what, what can they do to help uh, maybe limit that or even get more involved, Jason? Um, it's tough, actually. Um, for example, in Michelle's interview, Matt had said, oh, well, you could vote to change it. And I guess, you know, I, I know you're, probably your take, I mean, it's, yeah, you, you know, it's one, yeah, technically <laughs> you could vote to change it. But, you know, I really think it boils down to um, people really need to stop, I guess, obeying the system. I mean, that's just, I come from kind of the more extreme philosophy. And when it comes to, I guess, taxes or property, anything like that, I think people really need to stop paying into that. Right. I mean, it, we've already seen how effective voting can, you know, if you want to change it through voting, mob rule, it just doesn't seem to have a, a serious effect, potentially. I don't know, based off the last 100 plus years, I mean, so I think the best thing you do is have a large amount of people that stop obeying these, you know, irrational right. laws. I, yeah. I would agree. I mean, I, I hope that uh, some more folks would step up and instead of being, uh, up, you know, always saying what the states want to do is right is right, but uh, question it more on whether, you know, should we be this involved in somebody's lives? I mean, really, we're having the state, you know, dictate custody hearings, you sure. know, and, and at yeah. the end, no one can really win. The, the child is harmed, the, 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 the adult be, is wrong. What's, what do the parents think is best for their children? What role do you child? think, Heike, they should play in assigning custody to a, to a parent solely? Should the state have any involvement, little involvement, uh, honestly, minimal? Honestly, very minimal. I mean, if the parents absolutely cannot come to an agreement, then maybe involve someone. I, under, I agree. I would like to touch more on Thomas Ball when we have some more time. I think that'd be great. And for now, I think we're going to head on over to Michelle Seven, who is going to cue us into our next story. Great. And great that you can join us, Jason. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Heike, very much. Thank you, Ademo. Thank you, Heike, Jason, and Ademo. 
Last week we played a video at the end of the show that was produced by our next in-studio guest. His name is Jason Talley, and he is an independent journalist who seeks to give a voice to whom he calls victims of the state. Here is a preview of more of his work. What I'm supposed to do is suffer in silence. It's hard to keep hopeful. Completely lost all my faith. I don't need to need you. Tell me what to do. I'm Trisha Smith, and my trial starts today. Don't you want to help me? Tell me what to do. Help me find a way. What are you on trial for? Growing marijuana. Are you a peaceful person? Have you ever hurt anybody? I'm a nurse. I worked to Narin all my life. Where well, these calling machines are located? It was a very sophisticated venting system, electrical system with ballasts. The state will be able to prove that Patricia Smith was growing marijuana in her house. There is a, a principle that the jury can follow. And specifically in this state, it's actually carved out. And that's called jury nullification. <laughs> had the brilliant idea of having a, a demonstration here pointing out the irony, the hypocrisy of the state controlling the liquor business here in New Hampshire while at the same time outlawing other drugs such as marijuana. I think there's a ridiculousness with the state selling one of the most popular drugs and then essentially jailing its competition. The main grievance is that the government treats me like their child and not like an individual and uh, not only that but an abusive parent-child relationship at that. I, I, can't, I don't have the right to treat my own body the way I want. That's just nonsense and, and they uh, back it up with force. Jason is joined by Heika and a demo. Jason, why don't you tell us how Tally TV got started? Thanks, I'd be happy to, uh, and thanks for having me on the show tonight. Uh, Tally TV got started because I uh, moved to Grafton, uh, New Hampshire, and my friend uh, Bob Weedclaws Constantine, he was having uh, some problems with the authorities. They wanted to lock him in a cage for about uh, seven years because he was growing his own medicine, cannabis. And uh, everybody was really rallying around uh, Bob to see how they can help. Uh, with his case, uh, you know, which was uh, very unfair of what the state was trying to do to a good man. They're trying to pluck him out of the community. Um, and so I'm like, all right, I'll bring my camera and I'll see what I can do. And that's when um, we filmed uh, that piece that uh, we just saw. Awesome. Uh, so what other stories have Tally TV focused on here in New Hampshire? Well, um, we have several that relate to uh, marijuana prohibition. Um, and it's interesting now that uh, this story also relates to the news that the state of New Hampshire just uh, made like over $500 million in liquor sales. Um, however, uh, they want to cage their competition essentially. They want to cage peaceful people who want to uh, you know, use another drug. Uh, many times it's cannabis, but if you, uh, if you manufacture it, which is the charge in New Hampshire, uh, they will throw you in a cage. But if you uh, sell liquor with the state, uh, you get a pat on the back. You know, that's, that's marketing as opposed to drug pushing. Absolutely. Have you always uh, been in this line of work or how did you progress to uh, wanting to cover drug prohibition or was there previous uh, steps that led you into this? to Tally TV. Well, uh, you know about one of those steps. I do. Uh, yeah, um, Adamo and I traveled uh, the country for seven months uh, telling stories like this, uh, dealing with uh, other pro-liberty activists. However, it's, it's a little different for both of us now. Um, ever since moving uh, to the Shire, I, um, I, I've met people that are the victims of government violence. You know, we're, um, Adamo and I have moved here for the Free State Project. Heike, you're, you're a native, of course. but. Um, you know, I'm like, okay, great, we're free, we're in the free state, but that's not the case. Uh, unfortunately, they have like live free or die on the license plates, but they cage peaceful people, people that haven't harmed anybody, and uh, there's a lot of activism related to uh, making sure that stops. We actually talked about that last week, how prisoners generally make our live free or die license plates. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it's ironic all around. I mean, it's that, yeah, yeah. it's the state saying, uh, stock up and save. They have these big banners on their um, uh, liquor Lick warehouses on the internet. They, they push liquor on people, um, but they'll cage the competition. They'll cage people for choosing another drug, a drug that uh, many will say does have medical benefits um, 
and uh, isn't nearly as harmful as liquor. Now, how many videos have you made, produced for Tally TV? For Tally TV, uh, probably about uh, three dozen or so. Three dozen? Mm -hmm. Which one was the uh, most interesting thus far? Um, the most interesting one, that's interesting. I mean, Patricia Smith was a good one for me. I mean, uh, she was another uh, war on drugs victim uh, like myself, and she was, you know, an, a little elderly woman who was, you know, yeah. medical issues, was also trying to help a daughter, you know, similar to Bob. I mean, that one was pretty touching. Was there any others that are similar to that? You know, uh, Bob Constantine, the man I was talking about who um, they were trying to put in a cage, but the, the jury said no. Um, he uh, turned me on to that story. Um, you know, he's very much motivated to uh, profile the victims of government violence also, just like you are, right. just like I am. I mean, once you see what the state does, um, people of conscience don't really want to stand for that. Um, and so they're looking for ways to resist. And uh, as you know, we're peaceful people, so I think the camera is like the best uh, tool for that. It's a great I one. Agree. So what can uh, people expect to see coming up in TV? Do you have any? Uh projects in the works or ways they can get a hold of you? Yeah, thanks for asking. I mean, I've been spending a lot of time in Keene lately, and so uh, just today we were in the, uh, the uh, Cheshire County Superior Court, and uh, the bailiff uh, by the name of Tebow, um, he told me he was going to break my camera. And <laughs> yes, he did. All, all, all I was doing, I had the, uh, the camera going in the lobby. Uh, he was talking to uh, somebody, and I was just uh, rolling tape, and he put his hand on the camera, and, uh, and threatened to break it. For those of the viewers who don't know, uh, there has been an outright camera ban in uh, the courts in Keene specifically, not at the whole state, but in Keene, the district and the Superior Court have uh, not allowed cameras in their, or any electronics now, through the security checkpoints. Unless so. you get permission, which I had. Right. But so I'm- Or if you work for the court system. Well, they film everything and record everything. So I was just confused. So, I so mean, one minute I had permission, the next an employee, a bailiff, tells me he's gonna break my camera. So, so yeah, it's a why, customer why did they do this ban? Because, we, uh, because people are catching them messing up too much or? I mean, that, that's a great question. I, I, I think, yes, I mean, just obviously. all of a sudden, just like that. Just yeah. one day they said, oh, by the way, you can't bring that in here? Well, with great folks like uh, Jason Talley here that it will be in there filming and uh, highlighting, you yeah. know, making their day of work more transparent, the more people will see what they do every day, like the case with Thomas Ball. I mean, I'd never heard of anybody lighting themselves out on fire outside of Burger King but uh, they seem to do it at courthouses and government buildings a lot. And of course they deleted the tape. So right. I mean, they, the government doesn't like transparency, but that's what we're all about. We're all about transparency where, you know, just the actions of government are, should be open to the public, especially trials. Um, and so we try to record them as much as possible and they don't like it. it especially seems. since the funding for such come directly from our wallets at the barrel of a gun. So if they're demanding that we must pay for it, then I think it's a relatively simple request mm -hmm. to film. Wouldn't you agree, Heike? I Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's not good customer service to tell me they're going to break my camera when I'm trying to, you know, uh, share what goes on in the courtroom. Because not everybody can make it to court, you know. I mean, I think I'm, we're providing a service by, um, you know, uh, showing the video to the public. Well, that's, uh, that's a, quite the... Uh, so what else is coming up? Yes. Um, well, there's that. Um, I don't know. I mean, what, what I would like for people to do is uh, contact me, perhaps, 678-TALLY-TV, uh, uh, tallytv at gmail.com. If you know a victim of government violence or you are one yourself, you know, we'd love to talk to you. Now, are you focusing on just Keene now or just anywhere in the state? Uh, well, I don't like states, so I, uh, I travel in throughout. the Shire I, 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 or Shire. I, I, I travel <laughs> throughout the Shire. Wow. Well, I could. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Um, but, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I would prefer for people to, uh, to you know, move here and, and, and think that they're free or to realize that they're free as opposed to doing what I did, which is moving to a state and, and thinking you're going to be free because that's, that's not the ticket. So are there going to be uh, more aggressive videos uh, like you're talking about for um, Tally TV or just whatever comes to the inbox? Yeah, there's going to be all kinds. I mean, I have a hard drive full of like what I think are going to make great videos. It's just a matter of time of when to do it and when to launch them, you know. Um, now, I've seen some of your um, videos when there were some, basically, protests at the liquor store mm -hmm. up in Hooksett, New Hampshire. Right. Um, are those on Tally TV as well? Well, the one we just saw. Um, uh, or I mean, you had more than one, didn't you? Yeah, there, were, there has been two at liquor stores, and I'm, I'm told that uh, some activists in Keene are interested in doing some protests at the liquor stores here. And I'm all about that. And the protest. Oh, yeah, you went to. Uh, I went to yeah. everyone I could. 
Yeah. And the protests essentially consist of, you know, people with signs, uh, flyers, you know, letting people know about the hypocrisy of uh, the state. And of course, um, Weeda Claus shows up. There's a special appearance <laughs> by Weeda Claus, that's right. Um, which you can find out more about it at weedaclaws.com. But um, yeah, it was great to see so many people turn up. And not only that, but the customers that would come in and out of the stores, they were all about the message also. Oh, the they, they the see feedback the from them was fantastic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From the ones that I went to in Hooksit, which is you know, a major liquor store, because a lot of people from Massachusetts would come up. And I believe marijuana is decriminalized in Massachusetts. Uh, pretty much. You yeah. still get a fine at times. OK, so, so you get a fine. But well, I mean, they're all about like, well, this is New Hampshire. Why, why don't, why aren't you guys having that same rule or, exactly. or no rule? Exactly. The live for your die state is surrounded by other states that have uh, some form of decriminalization, but the governor uh, of New Hampshire keeps insisting that we're going to cage peaceful people. And uh, I think people of conscience uh, should stand up to that. And, and we wonder why we have tax money problems. Well, that's, well, that's the thing. I mean, they, uh, people will spend money at the state liquor stores paying the taxes, and that, that goes to fund you know, the caging of peaceful people. Uh, you know that and, and restaurants and you know I think I, I try to defund them as much as possible I don't like to see my money go towards that another good way to uh, help with defunding the state is uh, jury nullification and I know today you and I were out uh, in King Central Square covering a little bit of that but you want to tell us a little more about what we were doing out of the King Square today yeah it was great uh, if you uh, anybody that drove by that uh, heavily trafficked square would see I'd say there's about a dozen signs out there um, some activists uh, put them out there and then uh, made uh, flyers available, were handing them out. Um, and so, yeah, more people that know about their right as a juror to nullify bad laws um, are really going to help um, people. I mean, I wish Patricia Smith um, had somebody mm -hmm. on that jury that said, uh, no, no, you know, I'm going to vote my conscience and I'm not going to send this peaceful woman to a cage. Um, so I would encourage anybody that's out there, you can find out more information on nhjury.com about jury nullification. Right, that's exactly what the outreach is for, is nhjury.com. And for those who aren't familiar, jury nullification is, you know, when you get into a courtroom, if you're ever on a jury, if you, if you get this privilege, um, they will tell you that you need to judge the merits of the law on only by the facts, and you can only come back with guilty and or uh, not guilty. And really that's not true. And what we're trying to do out there with nhjury.com and the outreach we did is to let jurors know that if you don't agree that a person should be punished to whatever level or degree, you can nullify the law and therefore, you know, that person would walk and, you know, this is what led to slavery being repealed. Uh, prohibition. Prohibition and, and everything. So with that, I guess we are wrapping up our segment here. We thank you for coming thank on, Jason. Thank you very Jason, much, Jason. Thank you guys. For those who go out there and you. check out Tally TV and uh, we're taking it over to Michelle Seven. Thank you so much for joining us here at Free Keen TV. Tune in every Monday at 7 for a new live episode. And if you would like to contact Free Keen TV about a story, please send an email to tv at freekeen.com. I'm Michelle Seven. Peace be with you and yours. Good night.